Okay, time for a new filament. Ramberry, new manufacturer. So when I started out, I wanted to print things like these, uh, like these uh, Star Wars credits, this shiny uh, uh, PLA. I started out with this Mika 3D, if you've been following my videos. And this was a nice thing way to start with because they had a three pack of half kilogram reels, one of each color, silver, black, and a silver, gold, and copper. But then half kilogram reels are more expensive because there's more, you know, there's more reel material. So then I switched to CC3D. I had good luck with that. So here's another copper reel I got ready to go once the current one runs out. And when it came time to buy some more gold, which is this one, it was my last reel of uh, Mika 3D gold, uh, CC3D didn't have any in stock. So I looked around, found Ramberry. They seem to have good reputation. So we're going to try them out and see how they do. So let's check the packaging here. Got some padding. Layer of padding around it. That's nice. It's got a foil, uh, foil backed uh, vacuum container. It's got a super high uh, vacuum on it, so I'm happy about that. Let's go ahead and open this up. I have to kind of hold my breath when I open these up because they have a lot of off gassing. They get in here, so I have to kind of hold my breath a little bit. Let's check the color. So it's a little bit lighter gold, so I'm not completely happy with that, but uh, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll do the trick. And um, so it says uh, one kilogram, print temperature 195 to 220, and uh, it doesn't say anything about bed temperature. Came with a, a uh, silica pack inside, so that's good. Let's give it away, see how we do here. So we're getting 1255. So that's, this reel doesn't weigh 255 grams. So that's certainly we got our full one kilogram of, uh, of uh, filament out of this. So we're gonna do our regular test with it and see how it turns out. All right, we're ready to test our Ramberry Silk Filament. So we're going to use our standard temperature tower. So this is the tower I've been using in the cold, to slightly mild temperatures in the garage. It never gets much above 62, maybe 60, 62. So I'm going to go, go with this temperature tower and go down as low as 220. So this is an open SCAD project. There'll be a link in the show notes um, that you can get off Thingiverse. So you just put in your starting and ending temperature and then it automatically fills all this in for you. So we'll import that into Simplify 3D. So here it is, our temperature tower. And then we're going to set up our, our temperature profile. So bed temperature 40, that seems to be working well in the coldish temperatures, the unheated garage. And then uh, this is our temperature profile. So we start out at the layer 1, which is at the bottom here, 240, up to the first bridge, we're using, up to, we're using 240. And then as each bridge subsequent to that, we lower the temperature by 5. And the minimum is 220. So this Simplify 3D automatically handles these different layer temperatures for you. That's why I like it, among other things. And then again, in the cold garage, uh, we're only using 20% fan speed. Last summer, we were using 100% fan speed, which I think is pretty typical for PLA. But it's just too cold, and if you blow too much cold air on it, it just doesn't. Uh, it won't do any bridging like this. So, so and also on the temperatures. Normally in the summer we were printing at 220 a lot with our PLA, but here we are mostly printing at 230 because when the temperatures are cold, the uh, extruder can't actually maintain the set point at 230. It's maybe three, four, five degrees colder, especially once you put some cooling on. Even 20% fan is going to uh, is going to lower the temperature significantly to, from what your set point is. So. So this seal on this day is going to take about 55 minutes, so that's not too bad. So we'll do that, and then we'll see how that turns out, and then we'll go on to our next test project, and then we have one fun project like we usually have with each uh, filament. <laughs> Let's 
successful temperature tower. Let's see how it turned out. There's one string left from the last pointy thing. So a bit of adhesion is good. It's on there solid. Not too hard to get off. So let's take a look here. So lots of sagging. Lots of sagging at the higher temperatures. So let's take a look at the pointy things. A little bit of blobbing on the 220. 225 looks the best in my measurement here. Let's look at the back. And yeah, there's drooping, consistent drooping on the lower, on the higher temperatures, 230 to 240. So I think 225 it is. Yeah. Well, the pointy thing is a little bit better on 230. So I guess we'll go with 230. <clears throat> That's what we've been putting other filaments at. Hope it doesn't make that much difference. And we should get better layer adhesion. So let's go ahead and do, print the uh, bed and layer adhesion test at 230. And then we'll take it from there. All right, so the temperature tower turned out like was we expected. We're going to be printing at 230 and uh, 40 degree bed temperature. So we're going to go on to our next test project we always do with each filament, which is this... Uh, bed and layer adhesion. So what we're looking for on the bed adhesion is make sure none of these corners are peeling up. And uh, that means we have the bed temperature set correctly and also some indication on the extruded temperature. And then as far as as these layers sticking together, if we get a nice strong joint here and these layers are nice and tight, then we've got the uh, extruder temperature and the cooling set correctly. So that, this test has been really effective for me, so I recommend it. Again, there's a link in the show notes to this test on Thingiverse, so you're welcome to try it for yourself. And uh, so again, for our temperatures, 40 degree bed temperature, extruder 230, and cooling 20 degrees on the second layer. So try this. This takes about 55 minutes as well. Yes. So those are not too nice, reasonably quick tests to see how your filament's doing and your, how your uh, 3D printer is set up. So if this works out, then we'll go on to the fun test. it turned out well. It's pretty solid. Let's check the layer adhesion, bed adhesion rather. Bed adhesion is good. I'd say it was solid. Bottom came out clean. The surface is nice and shiny and the it, this is nice and shiny too. It's not blobby at all so it wasn't being overheated. And strength wise, is, well it was pretty strong. <laughs> not quite as strong as I thought but we don't, for what I'm printing, it's not that critical, but I think we had good layer adhesion. Not quite as good as some of the other filaments we've used, but uh, I think the layer adhesion is fine. I wouldn't want to go to lower temperatures. That would just be worse adhesion. So it's possible we could lower the uh, fan speed, maybe to 10%, but I think for what we're going to do, it's going to be fine. It's all mostly flat things. Let's go ahead and print our uh, fun project, and uh, we'll take it from there. But I think these temperatures are okay. So 230 in this cold to low 60 temperatures and then 20% uh, fan speed and 40% bed temperature. All right, we have a new fun test for this week for this uh, filament, and it's called the Great Wave. So this is a project that's on Thingiverse, and it's free to download. It, it's non-commercial, but of course I'm not going to sell this. So, And... Um, I'm actually printing this at 50 percent. The normal size is much bigger, but this is just a test. I'm not really going to print it at that high of a uh, size. I don't really need that for testing. So uh, this will be a great test for our temperature and particularly our cooling because there's a lot of bridging that happens in here. We'll have to see how that works out. 
And it should show off nicely with a shiny uh, filament, so I'm looking forward to that. So let's go ahead and see how long this takes to print. Oh, one other thing uh, I wanted to point out is on the advanced here for thin wall behavior, in my previous videos, I think I mentioned I was setting these both to uh, allow single extrusion walls, but I found out to be more effective if you allow gap fill. And I'll show that a little bit on this uh, project here, but this is more effective than single extrusion. So I'm getting better filling of small areas if you use uh, gap fill rather than uh, allow single extrusion. So this is a little tip. So let's go ahead and say prepare to print. And so the gap fill is this kind of lightish green. And if we look down here, you can see right in here, this little area right here is being filled in by gap fill. So that'll, that'll make your, your uh, surfaces look better, I think. This is a really complicated surface, but let's look at the layers. You can see there's going to be, oops, there's going to be a lot of bridging going on here. It's got 115 layers. So the bridging is going to be yellow. So there was some bridging there. I missed it. Right there. So you're bridging there. Yeah, so it's going to be testing our bridging quite a bit. So this will be an interesting test. I haven't printed this out before, so we'll just see what happens. I think it's a cool design, so I'm looking forward to displaying it, you know, on my desk here after I get it, assuming it prints out okay. So so this is a little bit, it's only an hour and 33 minutes, so it's not too bad. It's not as long as that wave thing we did last time. I started looking for waves, and I found this one after I found that uh, benchy wave, which I did on the last filament. So. So we'll try this and show you how it turns out. extruder problems quit right in the middle of the print now you can see definitely had a lot of extrusion issues wasn't extruding properly so this is a complete bust so either the filament is no good or our parameters are no good let me uh, clean this up a little bit and we'll take a little closer look at the print all right so you can see I didn't really extrude properly out of this area. And um, no bed adhesion, particularly. This, the first layer adhered okay. This is the first layer that does the line down here. So the first layer adhered okay. Well, actually, over adhered. I'll, have to, I'll be showing a tip on how to clean this up in a second. Um, but the extruder extrusion failed, and if it's too much, uh, there's too much uh, stress on the motor trying to extrude the filament in. Like it's not extruding, let's say. Then the, it, with the this printer works, it just shuts off. It doesn't give you an error message or anything. It just stops, stops the print, and you're left to wonder why it stopped. So that's usually what that's been my analysis so far is that it just can't extrude, and this motor overheats up here or draws too much current. The uh, uh, it, direct drive uh, filament feed motor over overloads, and it says, "Okay, it, it, it's good the printer's protecting itself. It'd be nice if it gave, it gave us an error message saying extruder motor um, uh, failure or something, but it just stops, which is annoying." But so I'm not sure what to say about this filament. I'm not impressed with this so far. The color was off from what I was expecting. And we have these extrusion issues. So it may be a bust. I might try to play around with it some more and um, see what I can do with it. But as of now, I'm not really going to be using this ra ra uh, Ramberry filament. <clears throat> if I can't find the CCC CC3D filament, I'm going to just buy the Mika 3D, even though it costs more because Stuff like this is just a waste of time. So, so I'm going to do my little hint here. So to, to get this, when you're filming, if you're printing PLA and you get this really bad adhesion, it's hard to get this off. 
The trick is, is to uh, crank the uh, bed temperature up to about 100. 80 or 90 can work, but 100 works better. I mean, it's it works a little bit better, I think. So you crank it up to about 100, and then the, the PLA will melt at 60. So at that point, this becomes very uh, like um, like chewing gum. You can just kind of peel it off. So that's my hint, and I'll wait till it heats up, and I'll show you how easily it comes off if you let it heat up to about 100 degrees C. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Post a comment if you have any questions or ideas, and I'll try to respond. That's all for now, but more videos are coming, and if you want to see them, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification icon if you don't want to miss one. This is Beta Signi signing out, and keep looking up.